and welcome along to Tamworth's Medieval St George's Day 2021. My is, name is Mistress Deborah and I'm a litster. You may not have heard of that term before, but what it actually is for you, a dyer, someone who puts colour into textiles. Now just before I get started, I'm going to go over here and put a piece of cloth into a pan. And I'll explain all about it later on, but it just needs to happen now before we get started. So that can go in there. Right. So in the medieval period, we had to get our colour from the natural world. We had to look at plants and insects for our colour. So I will go through and explain to you the various plants that give us the three primary colours. So the three primaries are of course yellow, red and blue. The first one we need to look at is yellow. So if I pick up this plant here, this is a plant called weld and it's a perennial weed basically in, in the UK. Everybody chops it down and throws it away, particularly councils. Nobody thinks much of it as a plant, although I think it's quite pretty and it grows up very tall and straight. And the colour it gives is this bright yellow here. Now isn't that a glorious yellow colour? And that colour will last for hundreds of years. And we know that because it's the yellow from the Bayer Tapestry. The next colour to talk about is red and the red comes from the root of the madder plant. This is the root and you can possibly see the red inside the root there. Um, madder isn't really native to the UK, it grew predominantly along the coast and along the northern edges of France and Belgium and Holland, the area known as Flanders in the medieval period and we chop up the root and put it in a pan and heat up the, the pan and that gives us this sort of colour here. So we can get it darker than that or we can get it more orangey than that. Madder is an amazing dye because it will give us lots of different shades of reds and oranges and pinks and things. With madder and with weld, we need to do something to help them to fix. They don't just naturally fix to the fibres. So what we had throughout history, there's even descriptions of it in cuneiform, so we know they were using it prehistory as well. And we had this stuff, which is um, a crystal of alum. Now, it can be found, obviously, in its natural form like this. This, this is a crystal from um, south, somewhere around the Mediterranean but actually it was controlled by the Pope and the Pope used to do all the trading of alum um, and in a period that's just a little bit later than this there was a king called Henry VIII in England and he fell out with the Pope. He caused us some quite huge problems with um, trade and the dyers were no longer able to do really good colours because they couldn't get hold of alum. So they started trying to find alum in Britain and I don't know if you've heard of a place in near Birmingham called Alum Rock but that's one of the places they were trying to find it. There's also Alum Bay down in the Isle of Wight. Eventually during the reign of Queen Elizabeth the first um, a gentleman called Thomas Chaloner found the alum shale that we need in the area around Ravenscar and Robin Hood's Bay in North Yorkshire. And what he found was this shale here. You can see this grey rock. It's quite boring looking really. But when it's been burnt in a clamp for about eight months, it changes colour to this, to this red colour. 
And this means that the aluminium sulfate that's in the rock has become soluble. And therefore you can wash through all the rocks and collect the water. And when you do that, you can then add in burnt seaweed, which gives you potassium, or stale urine, which gives you ammonia. And that, that will give you the alum that we need for dyers and for tanners. <coughs> Excuse me. So the third colour that we need to cover is blue. And blue is completely different to the others. For blue, we need a plant called woad. Now, I don't have a plant, so I've got a picture here to show you. And this plant is a biennial. A biennial. So we have the first year's leaves here, and then the second year it grows up and flowers, and then we get the seeds, so then we can start again. And what we actually need are these first year leaves. And we pick the leaves and chop them up in a bucket and then squash them into a ball like this. So this ball is what's known as a woad ball or in French it's a cocagne. And you can find references in the old trade books to cocagne coming in from France. Um, and this ball actually is the start of the chemical process because to get the blue, we have to do chemistry. Um, within the leaves, there is something called a precursor chemical, something that will convert into the blue. And there is a naturally occurring enzyme that helps that to happen. So chopping up the leaves breaks down the cell walls and we then get the, the enzyme acting on the precursor chemical and making it into the blue dye stuff that we need. When we've done that, we, we can then take the ball and we rehydrate it with a little tiny bit of water, but actually that blue dye chemical is not soluble in water. So we're not going to be able to make the dye bath with water at all. What we need is stale urine. So I have here a bottle of some beautiful very ancient still urine. The best comes from prepubescent boys. So if there's any boys out there, I always have my piss pot with me, ready to collect. If you need to go, just remember that's where you go. And actually, we used to pay a penny. There's a, an old phrase about, I'm so poor, I haven't got a pot to piss in because the dyers used to pay you for your wee. So if I go back to where I started, I'm going back over to the dye bath here. And this, if you remember, I put a piece of cloth in here right at the very start. What we're going to do now is see if that's dyed blue. We'll just get a piece out. And let's have a look. Now, what do you think? Is that a nice blue colour or is it green? Let me see that. I'm holding it out. What do you think? Is that blue or is it green? And maybe we should just watch it for a few minutes and see what happens. I think it's going darker. Looks to me as though it's going darker. It's going into more of a bottly green now, isn't it? I think. Yeah. There we go. That's gradually changing to blue and it's changing to blue in the air, it's oxidising. So when we've actually made the dye bath, we've had to take the oxygen away and now it's getting the oxygen back into it, it's going blue. I think I'm going to go blue too. I'm just going to have a quick dry. So what I thought was, maybe you'd like to have a go at dyeing yourself. Maybe you'd like to have a play. So what I've done, just leave that there, is I've got some jars here. You can use jam jars or you can use larger jars. And in here I've put some daffodil flowers. You can probably see the flowers there and some yarn. 
and that's going to give me a yellow colour. It's called solar dyeing and what we're doing is we're just putting the jars out in the sunshine and leaving them and then when the sun's been on it for about a month we can uh, take it out and have a look at the colour. So shall I have a little look and see what's happened? So let's take one of these hangers out and see what's happening. Oh yeah, getting some nice colour here. There we go. Got some yellows there. And that's just from daffodils. I'll just leave them in there and then I'll show you some more. So in this one, this one I've got red cabbage which is going really nice and purple. And what I did was I added a little bit of vinegar into this one. Now this one hasn't been in as long, so I don't really want to take the, the fibres out. And then in this one, I've got onion skins. And the onion skins have got some rusty nails in with them, which is making them go really dark. And I'm hoping that I'll get an olivey green colour with that. So I'll just explain to you how to do this and then you can have a go at home. Here. What you need is some empty jars, just like a jam jar like this, or even a bigger jar like this one. This one had pickles in. They're well washed out and then they're ready to go. Just put that up. I'm not going to leave that in there because I'll lose it. So, in this bowl, you can see I've got some onion skins and I've got pomegranate skins as well. I don't know if you like pomegranates, but I love pomegranates. I think they're great. So, I eat lots of pomegranate when it's in season. And then I've got some red cabbage as well. So, all we need to do is put some red cabbage in the bottom and maybe a bit of onion skin and then we need some fibres to dye. Now you may have something like this, we are like this. cotton bag like this, they're like veg bags that you can collect from the supermarket these days or an old tea towel like this one from your mum, go and chat up your mum and say please mummy can we do this or even an old tired t-shirt like this that could do with a bit of a life injecting into it. So I'll stuff this t-shirt in there. So we just put the t-shirt in and then put some more of the plant matter in. Just stuff it in there. Give it all the mix up. And we'll see that. And then we need some water. Just cold water onto it all. Pour it in there. Make sure the jar is really full. You want it to go all the top, all the way to the top, because the fibres and the plant matter are going to come up to the top. Put the lid on and then go and find a nice sunny windowsill and put them, put the jar on the windowsill. You might want to wait until it gets a bit warmer than it is at the moment. But as soon as you get nice warm sunshine, maybe the beginning of May would be a good time to start and leave it on the windowsill as long as you possibly can bear it, at least a month. But leave it all summer if you can and that will really develop the colours and you'll get really deep colours and the pretty patterns because you'll get colour where the plant matter is touching the t-shirt or, or whatever it is you put in there. So I hope you have some fun with that and if you get a chance we'd love to see you next year when we hope we'll all be together again 
for Tamworth 2022.